let's bring in Chris Collinsworth, the uh, Emmy Award-winning analyst for Sunday Night Football. Also, he's the owner of Pro Football Focus, and he has the Chris Collinsworth podcast. We were just talking about the Bengals, and you, you know they're not going in. Oh, woe is me! But can they play the play this up a little bit of it's us against the world in the Super Bowl? Um. <laughs> that would assume some some humble qualities to this football team, which I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if they have or not. You know, it's it's a. Um, I, 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 they think they're the best team in football. They they think that they are never out of a game, despite it being twenty one to three on the road. They think they can go into Tennessee and knock off the number one seed who had a, a week's rest uh, and, and beat Pittsburgh twice and beat Kansas City twice and, and beat the Baltimore Ravens twice and beat the number one seed and go into Los Angeles and basically a home game for the Rams and beat the Rams there. So I don't think they have that quality. They just would kind of laugh about if you said, are you guys really think you have a chance in this game? They go, yeah, we probably have a chance. You know, it's just who they are. When you look at the tape, if you're going to look at the Rams first, what's the one thing that would make you nervous with this team and the performance on Sunday? Nervous for them or against yeah, them? Nervous for them. Vulnerability. Vulnerability. Um, I, I would think because of some of the injuries they've had at the safety position, uh, Jordan Fuller and Taylor Rapp. Now Rapp may be back. I, I don't know how, what's going to happen there. But if this group of three receivers could get down the field and work some magic down there, um, I think that would give the Bengals a little bit of an advantage. Although I've got to say Nick Scott was phenomenal against the, the Tampa in the game that we did. Uh, and Eric Weddle against the run game with San Francisco was phenomenal coming down in the box uh, and making plays. But these are three legitimate threats um, at wide receiver. And, and I think Jamar Chase is already the best receiver the Bengals have ever had. And, and that's saying something because I watched Isaac Curtis. He was a teammate of mine. Uh, you saw him plenty. You know exactly who I'm talking about. Chad Ochocinco is a, had a phenomenal run in his career, but I've never seen anybody do what Jamar Chase has been doing. I mean, catching five yard passes and not even, not even getting touched, you know, forget about, they couldn't tackle him. They couldn't even get it. They, they couldn't even win one hand touch against the guy and going 70 yards for huge plays against Kansas city and against Baltimore when they needed it most. So uh, there's a, there's a lot of, a lot of fun on this, on this Bengals offense. The vulnerability for the Bengals, do we start with the offensive line? Yeah, no question. That That's it. Um, it it's uh, And then probably in particular, the, the right guard and right tackle position, uh, Akeem Adeniji and Jackson Carmen at that guard position are going to see a lot of Aaron Donald, uh, unless they go the opposite way, which I could see happening too, that um, – they love that overload defense. They love putting Aaron Donald on the on a three rush side. So maybe Von Miller sitting outside of him, uh, and Greg Gaines being at the nose tackle position inside of him to try and create that one on one matchup. And if they flip it to the other side, away from the right guard position, then do you end up with somebody else being in a position to be the hero of the game? Do they start trying to? loop Leonard Floyd down inside against him, you know, or do they blitz Troy Reader? Or do, you know, what exactly is the game plan? But everything, everything on this team gets built around Aaron Donald. So whatever they can do to create those one-on-one -on -one matchups for him, that's what they're going to do. Compare and contrast Jamar Chase and Cooper Cup. Um, about as different as they could be. I am from a, a lot of different standpoints, but I, I think that um, I think Cooper Cup is severely underrated, which is incredible to <laughs> say as a guy who won the triple crown of receiving. And I would argue that you have to add a fourth component as well. And that's what he's done blocking. 
I mean, so much of what this team can do comes off of play action passing and the ability to protect this offensive line and to, for him to go dig out defensive ends and linebackers and, and pop through there somehow and block the safety uh, and you give the Cam Akers of the world a, a chance to go make explosive plays. I mean, he's not that big a guy, you know? I mean, he, but he blocks like he's a 240-pound tight end. Uh, he, he's one of the most impressive guys that I've seen. But Jamar Chase is, is, to me, has a chance to be considered one of the greatest receivers we've ever seen in the game. Really? Yeah, I think he's that good. We're talking to Chris Collinsworth. He'll be on the call, the fifth Super Bowl that he's uh, called. He'll be with Al Michaels and uh, Michelle Tofoya. That'll be NBC and Peacock this Sunday. How surprised are players when they find out that you actually played in the NFL? <laughs> I surprised some of them because I, I, I always said my goal in life when I was playing was to walk around the streets one day and have somebody who didn't know me walk up and say, you know, you look like a football player. I, I, never, I never got that comment. I never once in my entire life. Even so, when you were wearing your uniform out in, in uh, the streets. They yeah, still... no, I, which I would do from time to time. Yeah, I, I would. But, yeah, no, it, it, um, I, I, I don't even know what the question is. No, that, that do you have players who don't know that you played football? Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure, yeah. And... Um, but they don't know that Troy Aikman played to some extent, you know? <laughs> I mean, these guys, I, it, they're so funny and they're so fun. And they're, they're all great communicators now because they're all, you've got to be on social media, right? That's the only way you have a social life in the world today is you've got to be able to put on, be your own producer and create your own content on your own cell phone and, and, and nobody's going to the media to break a story anymore. You just go on your cell phone and you say whatever you want, and then you get all the attention for yourself. So they're all very good on camera. They all have a bit of a sense of humor with everything. And, and there's this brutal honesty to them. So where if, if they don't know who you are, they'll just tell you. You don't have to guess. It's not like in the old day where somebody's going to go like, yeah, you know, try and work the edges a little bit. Like, who are you again? Did you play? You know what? You know, so they'll just they'll let us ask you. You're uh, one of six players to play on both of the Bengals' previous Super Bowl teams. Is that right? I think so. Yeah. I was one of one. I know that. I don't know about all the others. <laughs> but so you lose to Montana on both of those. Which yeah. one Which one hurts more? Um, you know, the, the funny thing is most people would say the 88 – uh, team because you know it came down in the last 34 seconds and they had to drive 90 yards in the final two minutes to beat us and, and all that um i always thought that the 81 team was was the one that kind of hurt the most maybe it was just because it was my first year or whatever the case but um that was a really good football team and kenny anderson played well enough to win that game and be in the hall of fame all of us and me in particular made mistakes in that, in that first Super Bowl, And it's kind of the sting of that sort of always lives with you. So uh, yeah, they both hurt, believe me. It's uh, I, at one time I wore an AFC championship ring to a party and all anybody <laughs> wanted to do is talk about the two Super Bowl losses. I go, this is a great <laughs> idea. I just stuck it in my pocket for the rest of the day. Whenever you run into Joe Montana, the, does this come up at all that you know he he cost you two Super Bowls? He didn't. He he won two Super Bowls. I just happened to be on the back end of it. We were the Washington Generals for the uh, for the 49ers in, in the eighties. But Joe's such a good guy. I would love to hate him. Would you? I mean, there's so many people in your life. Would you just love to hate him, and, and you just can't. He's just such a nice guy. I, I remember one time, Dan, we were flying back from the Pro Bowl together. A little humble brag there, and uh, <laughs> so we, we just we just happened to be on the on in the, sitting next to each other, and uh, you know, and of course, Joe had kicked our head in and won the Super Bowl and all that, and he is literally pounding one drink after another. 
to try and work up the nerve for takeoff with this airplane. And I mean, he was as white knuckled as any flyer I've ever been in an airplane with and just couldn't talk, couldn't function and was just it was making him crazy. And I go, are you really Joe Montana? Is this the guy <laughs> that beat us every way imaginable when I was playing for Cincinnati? Uh, but he's he's a humble guy, and I, I can't even find it in me to hate him. Do you have any issues with the Pro Bowl? I don't watch the Pro Bowl. I'll be perfectly <laughs> honest. <laughs> we, we, we used to we used to announce that is it still as bad as it was? Well, I they, mean, it looked like they're no tackling, the Chris. They they played two and touch on uh, on Sunday. I I I I don't watch that. I really like football, <laughs> and if I want to watch two hand touch, I'm gonna go watch the kids. When do you meet with the coaches and the quarterbacks? Uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So we'll go out. I went to a Bengals practice the other day while I was in Cincinnati. And, um, but we, we'll go Wednesday and Thursday to, to watch both practices. I'll leave you with this. The Bengals will win if. If they can get it protected. I mean, it's really about as simple as that, that, and you know, they're not going to get it protected every down. These guys are just too good up front. Can they get it protected when they have chances for big plays? And if they can, these receivers can make big plays happen. Chris, thank you as always. We appreciate uh, your contributions the entire season. We'll be watching on Sunday. All right, Dan. Good seeing you. That's Chris Collinsworth. He'll be on the call with Al Michaels, Michelle Tafoya. I think that's Michelle's final game. I think she's retiring. And uh, what a classy, classy woman. Great reporter. And uh, I think this is her last game.